All right, we're here in uh, at uh, well, a park near uh, near my house, and this is Rocky. And uh, we were we worked with Rocky a couple days ago on uh, some basics in the house, and today we're working on some bat training or behavior adjustment training. Behavior adjustment training is basically uh, helping the dog modify its behavior by putting it in a stage scenario where we control the environment somewhat and give the dog practice, uh, give them outs or opportunities instead of targeting or reacting to another dog to be able to move away, sniff the ground, do things along those lines. I have some shredded cheese here. This is going to be my mild distractor. If he gets a little bit in trouble, I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on the ground to try to get him an opportunity to sniff the ground. When dogs sniff the ground, that's kind of a way of saying I'm calm and comfortable or uh, hey man, I want you to relax. And so uh, getting a dog to we're kind of mimicking that particular behavior by shredding it. Now when you get cheese, um, I got some, uh, this is the Italian three cheese blend. Some dogs like cheddar better, some dogs like different types of cheese. Try to stay away from something too spicy like Cheddar Jack. Uh, but the idea is the shredded cheese, so he's got to kind of work for it when it's in the grass. Now uh, before we go into this, I'm going to show you, go over just how we can use the lead. This is a 20 foot lead. And the way that we do this is we don't want him to like get the end of the leash and go doink and, uh, and get a jerk on the neck. So what we do is we take this lead, we want to kind of wrap it, if you just wrap it traditionally like this, it'll get tangled up. Rocky, Rocky. And the whole point of this, we don't really want to pull on the lead, we want him to come to us on his own. So for this one, what I do is I just kind of make a bunch of figure eights on opposite side of my hand. So when he, if he does take off, I can just kind of let it go out and gradually break it, um, applying a little bit of pressure to slow him down so he doesn't get to the end of the leash and go jump. All right, um, so Amanda, right over there with my roommate uh, and uh, Ruby her dog is gonna they're gonna help us be the, uh, the student dog so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of we're gonna walk and I'm gonna try to get him closer to Ruby but I really want him to take the lead and the idea is we don't want to pull him away if he starts staring or in his case he likes to do some whimpering when he starts whimpering that he, that's his saying I'm getting too close to this particular dog I'm getting close to my breaking point the whole point point in bat training is the dog cannot react if the dog is, especially if it's hysterical, it's not gonna learn anything. So the idea is to get him close to the other dog, as close as he feels comfortable, and as soon as he starts to get a little bit uncomfortable, then we, we're gonna call him away. So we're gonna help him practice moving away from the dogs that he is reactive to. Most dogs really act really very aggressive towards other dogs to make the other dog move away. Well, the other option of that equation is for the dog itself to move away. And that's basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna help him practice. Now we have a little dog that's not participating that's behind us, and. It's kind of uh, doing its little business for the day. So we're gonna kind of head in this direction. We'll see how the camera work, go, uh, how the uh, the camera, I'm sure the operator is great. Mm -hmm. It's kind of always Tated a little interesting. <laughs> All right, Rocky. Rocky, come on, buddy. Rocky, come on, buddy. There you go. Yeah, there we go. See, up so we're about 25 feet. You can see he's aware of her and he started whimpering. Very good, Rocky. Now, he's, now we've kind of got a dog on either side, which is not ideal. Normally you just want to have the one dog you're controlling. We're in Santa Monica, we can't control all the parks. And you can see this little dog is a little bit more, is producing more of a strong reaction. If you want to go ahead and show the other dog. So when he starts doing something like this, this is an opportunity, Rocky, Rocky, to sprinkle some of that cheese. So you see, as soon as we did that, he stopped targeting the other dog and he's engrossed in getting the cheese. This is what we, this is why we use this. Like I said, this is just a mild distractor to help him. Uh, at that point, we're about 20 yards, 20 feet away from Ruby. We're about 40 feet away from that dog, and that was the dog that was produce, producing the response. Now, uh, the, just a quick house cleaning thing. Uh, the guardians came up here <coughs> the last two days to let Rocky wander around on his own. So when you guys are doing this at other locations, you always want to try to take Rocky there a, a day or two on his own without any other dogs, preferably. I know that's hard. Um, just to give him a chance to wander around and sniff so it's not a completely new environment. All right, Rocky. And again, as you're going to see me doing this, you're going to, uh, I'm going to try to avoid what, at all costs putting a tension on the leash. I want him to be able to drive and him to do it where he's empowered to do all of it. Rocky, there you go. So this is about 20 yards or 20 feet, and this is a little bit difficult for him. So let's see if we can provide a little bit of a distraction. Rocky. a little bit of movement with the other dog 
So you saw that, that that caught his attention. For dogs, their eyes are very attracted to movement. They're not very good for color or for detail. Crush. So we're gonna bring it back to his distractor and give him a chance to do this. And you wanna take note of how close they are. So now we're closer, we're about 15 feet. Let's go ahead and go down to the third sniff where the other dog was, that's totally fine. Rocky. Rocky. There you go. Yes, I'm trying to be a little uh, too tangled. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do, Amanda, is I'm going to just, we're going to kind of do a little bit of a loop. So I'm going to have you kind of walk to the other side of that post, around that tree, around these trees. Around this, we're just kind of going to do an oval, and I'm gonna—we're just going to follow him. So if you want to kind of just follow us, Rocky, Rocky, come on, come on, Rocky. There we go. There we go. Get a little tail movement for Rocky, which is unusual. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. yes, we got you tangled up, didn't we? There you go. All right, Rocky. So you could do this when you're, uh, like if you're at a park or somewhere, just walk behind another dog and just kind of give the other dog a chance to, uh, your dog a chance to sniff and observe the other dog from a bit of a distance. And sniffing is your friend, so don't ever discourage him if he's sniffing. A little bit slower, Amanda. He's like, I know this person. <laughs> Salute. All right, Rocky. Come on, buddy. So you saw at that point he started going a little bit too far. I would, I'm a little bit limited having two hands, but that's where we kind of want to break it a little bit and let him go. Slow him down before he gets to the end. So he's staring, you see his tail is stiff. Mm. And again, I don't have any tension on the line. Rocky, Rocky, puppy, puppy, Rocky, Rocky. So if I do call, pull, use the leash to pull away, I'm kind of using a little bit of a rocking motion. Rocky, Rocky, come here, Rocky. As you can see, at this distance, it's hard for me to call him away. Rocky. And you can see he's not that interested in treats. So go ahead, maybe take about 10 steps the other direction, Amanda. Now Ruby is a great target because she's a training dog because she's not super high energy. Your, your reaction, your distance to the other dog is going to be dependent on the other dog. If the other dog is really full of beans, like a puppy is running around and barking, it's going to attract his attention at a much greater distance. Rocky! 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 <laughs> He's going to go straight to the tap. So if he does get into a situation like that, call him away. And if he can't settle himself down, then sprinkle a little cheese to give him a chance to kind of sniff it like he is now. And again, this is what he would do around another dog to say that I'm comfortable. Rocky, Rocky, come here, Rocky, come here. Come, very good. Now, if you have a really high value reinforcer, he's not that interested in the chicken treats that I'm using here. So what I would do is maybe stop at Chipotle and get a little uh, jar of uh, their chicken. Uh, we want something, uh, the temperature is more important to dogs than the taste. And so we can get something that's a little bit higher value. When he does come to us, we want to give him a treat. Now this is something I'd like you guys to also practice. If you guys get a long lead and you're just kind of wandering around a park like this, you want to develop leash skills. As you're wandering around and he's kind of sniffing and there's no other dogs around, there's nothing around, every once in a while call him over, give him a treat, call it like return or attention or something, a command that means uniquely when we're at a park doing this sort of activity, I want you to come back to me. We want to shape that behavior independent of other dogs so that he has more practice that. So when you ask him to come back, it's not a foreign concept, it's something he's done over and over again. 
Okay, um, I'm going to try to get a little bit closer to Ruby and then we'll probably wrap this one up and then I might have the Guardians doing back, uh, doing what we're doing here. Now when you're doing this, you want to keep this in short little uh, segments. Don't push for longer than like maybe five to seven minutes per encounter. Then take him away from the other dog, let him relax and settle down and calm down, give him kind of a little bit of a break. Now we've got a second dog that's kind of walking through the park and also a little dog. And so you can see he started whimpering a little bit and whining. It's not Ruby, it's the other dog. So it just tells us that motion is something, it's a trigger for him. And this would be a good opportunity to try to just... Hey, you can see once he's what we call above threshold, he's not going to be around anything. So we're just going to have to wait for that to pass. His tail. The tail's wagging, good, good opportunity. Now it's actually t wagging where we like. We'd like to see it wagging parallel to the spine. Usually straight up and quivering is kind of more assertive. So, and his, his vocalization tells me this is more of a frustration. Maybe I want to play with you, but I don't, I'm not confident enough to play with you. We're not sure, but we obviously want to make sure that everything stays safe. So we'll see how he does with Ruby. Ready to try to get a little closer to Ruby? It's like, no, I want your cheese. Because <laughs> I'm a smarty pants. <laughs> Rocky, that's a good way to end the video, but we're going to try to get you a little bit closer to mm -hmm. Ruby and we'll see how you do. All right, Ruby. All right, Rock. Come on, buddy. Now this is not something that I want you guys to try to achieve right away. I just want to see if we can get him to meet, depending on how his body language looks. You see his tail stop moving again, and he's kind of staring. Ruby's like, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. This is not part of that. This is actually want to see how he does when we get to, uh, to another dog. Whoop. Nope. So this is an illustration of why we don't move this far too fast. So uh, Ruby is a sweetheart. So again, if we have a dog that's barking and reacting, that's going to turn into a fight really quick. All right, watch. Let's bring. It, please, let's give a little bit more space. So we're about, this is probably a little bit, per, uh, there we go. So at this point, you can see I don't have to uh, hold him away. So the distance that you are to the other dog is going to be dependent on uh, the other dog's personality as well as how much practice he has at this. As you're doing this more and more, you should be able to get closer and closer to the other dog. But at the end there, what I was doing was just trying to see how he would do to evaluate him because I haven't seen him around another dog where I can control the other dog. For, for Bat, we want to let him go at his own pace if he wants to walk away. That's wonderful. That's part of what we want him to do in bat training is understand if I'm uncomfortable with the other dog, I don't have to interact. I can move away on my own. All right, well, this is Rocky. That was Ruby. And these are some tips and tricks on how you can use bat or behavior adjustment training to help your dog practice being calm around other dogs.